Hello, and thank you for joining us at the AT&T Performing Arts Center's third annual Virtual Monologue Competition Awards Ceremony. My name is Warren Tranquata, the Center's President and CEO, and I'd like to congratulate each and every one of our finalists for their outstanding work. Three years ago, North Texas arts educators told us they needed alternative performance opportunities for high school students during the pandemic, a way for them to perfect their craft and prepare for the next step to college or a career. So we launched the virtual monologue competition and we received so many great submissions, we said, let's keep it going and do it again, make it an annual tradition here at the center. This year, students from 22 schools across 15 school districts submitted some of the most competitive entries yet. I know you'll be impressed by the work that we received. The submissions were reviewed by a blue ribbon panel of professionals, award-winning actress and singer Denise Lee, Playwright and residence at the Dallas Theater Center, Jonathan Norton, and the Diane and Hal Brierly resident acting company member, Tiffany Solano. Ten finalists were chosen, and each one came to the center's campus to receive one-on-one -on -one coaching from a professional teaching artist, and then a professional videographer recorded their performances. We'll see the ten finalists shortly, but first, special thanks to the Harry W. Bass Jr. Foundation, the Texas Commission on the Arts, the National Endowment for the Arts, and the City of Dallas Office of Arts and Culture for their support of our education programs. Now let's take a look at the monologues from our 10 finalists. Pearson Jones. I had some fun. I fell in love and all of that, and you, you got yourself a grade. And a column inch or two in the school paper. And you know, congrats. Seriously. But don't fool yourself and say that this is art, okay? Because, because this is a sick fucking joke, but it's not art. You know, when, 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 when Picasso, when he took a shit, he didn't call it a sculpture, did he? No. He knew the difference. That's what made him Picasso. And if I'm wrong about that, if I completely, if I miss the point here and, and, and somehow puking up your own little shitty neurosis all over people's laps is actually art. And come on, you, you at least, you gotta realize that there's a price to it all, you know? Because someone always pays for your two minutes on CNN because someone always pays for people like you. And if you can't see that at least a little bit, then you're about two inches away from using babies to make lampshades and calling it furniture. You know, anyone can be provocative or shocking or stand up in class and take a piss or paint yourself green and run naked through a church screaming out the names of people that you've slept with. Is that art? Or did you just forget to take your riddle in? It's not art if you have nothing to say. And you clearly don't. You just need attention. Hello, my name is Lindy Hilborn. I found out who the girl was. The first night when he threw me out, I stood outside his door for a while and just listening to the sounds of his routine, it, it was almost as good as being there with him. The stairway to the upper floor is just outside his door and the wall it runs along is the outside wall to his apartment. In my mind, I could see the layout of all his rooms and I just knew it was his bedroom wall. I leaned against it. I could hear David's footsteps. It was so intimate. The girl asked if she could sleep on his side of the bed. <laughs> she said she's peculiar that way. David thinks she might be compulsive. I found a bottle of pills with her name on it and I called the drugstore, pretended I was her and asked them to renew my prescription, but the druggist said it had coding in it and that she couldn't renew it. I think it was a painkiller, not a sleeping pill because David has sleeping pills he could have given to her. 
Isn't that funny? I know everything about her. What color lipstick she wears, how her voice sounds, even when she has her period. And I've never seen her. She doesn't even know I know. Huh. <clears throat> Cooper Campbell. <laughs> Theory. <laughs> you call scientific fact Theory. <laughs> I mean, it's mankind's problem in a nutshell. We never go far enough. We just keep pushing ourselves further and further to recognize the needs of others. I recognize the needs of the grape. You see, the grape wants to live. The veal wants to die. Now, why should I stand in the way of the veal and deny the grape? So locked off from life with your piecework. I mean, don't you know anything? Next life around, I'm coming back as a vegetable researcher. I'm already committed to being an artist in this life, but I feel so inadequate when I compare the work I'm doing to the work they're doing on vegetables. Have you heard the cries of the asparagus? I mean, granted, zucchinis are dumb, but radishes are brilliant. If we could just break the code. All the money wasted, trying to break the language of the dolphin. Oh, well, they finally do. What are these dolphins saying to us? These uh, high, reedy voices squeaking, uh, the sun goes down, the tide goes out. I have no sympathy for mammals. Meat has wings, meat has gills, meat has hooves. Meat can die. Meat wants to die. Plants have roots. Plants are trapped. Plants are dependent. Plants know what it means to survive. Plants have to stay there. Sydney Haygood. I wish I could feel otherwise. I wish I was like you, or my mother, who just feel that some things are just predetermined and meaningful and that we're all on the same line from start to finish, but I can't because I believe in what's true and what's actually verifiably true. And you're willing to forfeit rationality for some comfortable untruth and you're supposed to help me? You're looking at the world through such a narrow filter. You're hardly even living in it. You're barely even alive. Drugs and alcohol have never let me down. They have always loved me. There are substances I can put into my bloodstream that make the world seem perfect. That is the only absolute truth in the universe. I'm being difficult. Because you want to take that away from me. Hi, my name is Campbell Smith. Do you ever actually feel any guilt? Because it's, um, it comes a bit of a, a shock to me that I, I don't or can't actually feel it. Like it's not something I can generate somehow. Like I, I find myself having to actually summon it, trying to encourage myself, and, and even then I can't do it. I thought it might be shock at first and then grief, but all I can feel is total joy, total peace. Sometimes I look at you and I actually make myself think of him. I force him 
into my head and I, I don't feel guilty. What kind of a person does that make me? Hi, my name is Stephen Young. Well, I live here too. All right. I ain't scared of you. I was walking by you to get into the house because you were sitting on the steps drunk singing to yourself. I ain't gotta say excuse me to you, Pops. You don't even count around here no more. Now why don't you just get on out my way talking about what you've done for me? What have you ever done for me, Pops? You ain't ever done nothing but hold me back, afraid that I was gonna be something better than you. Man, I used to tremble every time I would hear your name throughout the house, every time I would hear your doggone footsteps. What's Pops gonna do if I do this? What's Pops gonna do if I do that? What's Pops gonna do if I got my radio up too loud? Even mom can't stand you. Mom can't even stand you even after what you did to her. So what are you gonna do, Pops? You gonna whoop me? I bet you can't do that because you're nothing but an old man. You are a crazy old man. But you're so bad that you can just put me out. Then go ahead, Pops. Put me out. Um, I'm Addison Abeda. Maybe you've suffered over, I don't know, bad auditions, lost movie deals, maybe bad grades in high school, but you've never struggled for your livelihood and wondered if your deepest desires would ever be fulfilled. You've never questioned your place and known you were worth more than your pathetic life looked like. And the thing is, I have. I don't mean to sound sanctimonious. It's just really hard to relate to you. No. No, I don't think I'm better than you. I'm judging the fuck out of you, and I don't know how not to. I don't know what it feels like to wake up and be as beautiful as you. Hi, my name is Lydia Kaiser. Of course it does. <laughs> I really need you to be cleverer than this. I really need you to at least match me intellectually. <laughs> because otherwise, I'm going to leave. And if I leave, I don't know if... <sighs> I'm not powerless. I'm not helpless. I don't believe addiction is a disease, and I'm scared and angered by the suggestion that from now on it's either eternal abstinence or binge to death. I wake up in wet sheets in places I don't recognize with bruises that I can't account for. I've stolen from people. I've slept on the streets. <laughs> I'm in trouble. I know that. But this book, this process, can't help me. You can't help me. You want me to conceptualize a universe in which I am the sole agent of my destiny and at the same time acknowledge my absolute powerlessness. I am not the product of the decisions I have made or the things that have happened to me, and I will not be reduced to that. Sophia Wheeler.
What are you thinking about? Don't answer that. No, that's such a stupid, such a stupid question. <laughs> are you thinking about me? Good things? <laughs> or is it negative? Are you thinking about negative things about me? Not that I'm bothered. Nope. <laughs> I'm not bothered. I don't care. You, you know, I, I don't. Is it that I talk too much? Is that it? You know, you're sitting there in absolute silence thinking, yeah, Leah talks too much. I wish she just shut up once in a while because, you know, I do. Yeah. I'm admitting. I talk too much. So shoot me. So kill me, Phil. Call the police, lock me up. Rip out my teeth with a pair of rusty pliers. I talk too much. What a crime, what an absolute catastrophe because you know you're not perfect either. There, I said it, you're not. My name is Brenna Marie Stewart. I didn't break the vase, okay? It was my boyfriend, Roger, and I took the blame. I don't go around smashing up precious antiques. That's, that's not really my idea of a fun time. I knew that if my parents found out that he broke it, they would make it a rule for me not to see him. And I thought, thought, I loved him. So I took the blame. And that's when they came up with the unique punishment of no allowance for 13 years. But it didn't even matter because uh, he broke up with me a week later for Sheila Martin, the new girl. Hmm, new girl. My school doesn't usually let new girls in past the seventh grade. So having a new girl junior year was just a revelation and all the boys just melted. And she's richer than Bill Gates. So she could afford to give him presents, which I of course had to stop doing. Wow, weren't those fantastic? Again, you should all be so proud of the work you have done here. And now, let's reveal our winners. Tied for fourth place are Sydney Haywood and Cooper Campbell, both from Grand Prairie Fine Arts Academy. Sydney and Cooper will each receive a $100 cash prize. Excellent work, Sydney and Cooper. Our third place winner is Lindy Hilborn, also from Grand Prairie Fine Arts Academy. Lindy will receive a $250 prize. Congrats, Lindy, and congrats to Grand Prairie Fine Arts Academy for having three of our top five winners. Our second place winner is Brenna Marie Stewart from King's Harvest Homeschool Collective. Brenna will receive a $500 prize. Well done, Brenna. And the grand prize winner for our third virtual monologue competition is, drum roll please, Stephen Young from Tyler Legacy High School. Stephen, you'll receive our grand prize of $1,000. You did an exceptional job and congratulations. And to all of our finalists, congratulations again. Thanks to you, your parents, and your teachers for being part of this year's competition. We hope to see you soon at the AT&T Performing Arts Center. Have a great evening.